So I would like to welcome everyone to this marketplace uh, session on next generation education in Tibet. And while we wait uh, for people to join the session, we can watch a brief video as an inspiration um, for what is about to come. Yari na kakini. Kapag mute, unmute. So again, I would like to welcome everyone to this session of the Innovative Marketplace. This session is on next generation education in Tibet, and we will have a group of Finnish pioneers in digital education development who will introduce their next generation education concepts. So in their um, collaboration model, each member of the multidisciplinary consortium plays a very specific role. This allows them to utilize their specific expertise efficiently to develop 
um, innovations for the Tibet context. So today, through their presentations and also our subsequent discussion, we will learn about the next generation education innovations from Finland and also hear about their ready-made solutions that are not only pedagogically effective and efficient, but which can also improve sustainability and gender equity. After the presentations of the panelists, we will have time for a question and answer session to dive deeper into the details and also to explore how to adapt such solutions to the needs of our developing member countries. I would already like to encourage you to post your questions in the chat box. Now I would like to introduce our first expert from Finland, Dr. Mika Luimula. He works as a research group leader of futuristic interactive technologies and also as a principal lecturer of game and interactive technologies for Turku University of Applied Sciences. Mr. Louis Muller holds a PhD in information processing sciences and also an MSc in mathematics. Dr. Louis Muller holds an adjunct professorship at the University of Turku and his research interests include gamification, serious games, virtual re reality and augmented reality and also health informatics and location aware systems. Um, welcome Dr. Louis Muller, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you everyone. So let me share my slides. So thank you so much for, for this uh, opportunity. We are so gratitude for, for ADP for, for this, this possibility to, to introduce our our solutions in in ADP meeting. Uh, so, title of our session today is uh, "Next Generation Education in in Tibet Context," and uh, we have a consortium here, uh, industry parties from uh, for other organizations. And uh, I'm the first uh, speaker here, so let let's first uh, focus on 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 the background and uh, on our research activities. <clears throat> some some background information. So uh, every speakers before they will start their presentation, they will they will be introduced, but uh, already now shortly about our, our consortium. So uh, we have a <clears throat> Kiva inspector present today here. Uh, they are one of the market leaders in, in training, inspection and certification business and, and they have more than uh, 4,500 uh, specialists all, the, all around the world. We have also uh, VR Studio Ade from Finland, who are, who are pioneers in, in uh, virtual training, and uh, they have developed these solutions since uh, 2004. We have also Linksoft participating today here. Uh, they have a wide range of uh, linguistic uh, professionals all over the world. And, and uh, finally, we have also uh, TTS, one of the Finnish pioneers in, in uh, virtual pedagogy. So they are telling you uh, their greetings about uh, user and user perspectives in, in this case. Here is uh, a diagram of, of our, our consortium. And, and uh, we are, of course, uh, searching today answers whether our consortium could, could uh, uh, offer something for, for you and, and uh, we are also searching for partners who could be part of, of this, this uh, consortium in, in uh, uh, research institute side, in uh, training organization side, as a uh, certification body or as a service developer or, or providers. So we are underlining that this, uh, this is a multidisciplinary work, what, what we are doing to, to uh, serve you and, and, and offer these uh, next generation learning opportunities. And uh, we, we are needing uh, specialists from, from uh, pedagogists, from, from uh, psychologists towards computer sciences, uh, programmers, uh, TVET specialists, uh, certification experts, AI specialists are, are needed, and so on. Uh, about global needs, what, what we have identified uh, in, in uh, education. So um, there is a need 
for, for new tools, especially because of this, this uh, COVID-19. But uh, like we have uh, seen because of this uh, Delta variant, uh, uh, there is a need for, for these new digital solutions also in, in new normal where we, wherever we are, we are going. Uh, there is a lack of, of uh, teachers because of, of uh, uh, growing population in, in uh, many, many countries. And uh, there is a need for, for urgent uh, digital solutions to, to help in, in, in this uh, problem to be tackled. Uh, we believe that these uh, digital solutions can be one, one solution for gender equity. And uh, of course, these uh, digital virtual training solutions will decrease a need for, for traveling. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a part of, of uh, sustainability strategies as well. As a research uh, uh, scientist, uh, so we, we are of course interested about uh, convincing that uh, this, this uh, new learning methods and, and this pedagogy that it's uh, effective. We need to conduct uh, <coughs> effectiveness studies also in, in a local context focusing on, on localization issues, customization issues by using multilingual content, etc. Also this, this uh, labor mobility between countries, it, it's a global challenge and uh, there is a demand for, for continuous education because, because of this. Also this, this uh, labor mobility, refugee issues, etc. It, it generates uh, challenges in, in uh, identifying uh, possible uh, skill gaps and, and uh, this, this uh, digital solutions can, can be a possibility, a tool to conduct any kind of uh, skill gap uh, analysis. And finally, as we have here, Kivan Inspector here, uh, this, this competence recognition, even so that it, it's certified, it's uh, standardized based on uh, uh, any kind of, of uh, certification bodies requirements or, or ministries requirements. That's one of the global need as well. How about then if uh, uh, we, we have uh, identified the needs, uh, what is then needed to, to start the process in, in uh, uh, new, new countries? First of all, we, we need to collect a group of, of uh, expertise uh, and, and uh, demo, by the way, uh, please uh, turn the mic off for, for, for a while. So, so sorry, so many uh, group of experts will be needed to, to identify uh, this, this uh, local context. After that, when we have uh, analyzed these uh, regulations and certifications, we, we can uh, uh, move on and uh, next step is, is to start uh, creating these uh, virtual reality and web training environments, offering also e-learning contents, and, and uh, also uh, integrate them to, to traditional classroom trainings. Localization, linguistics will be taken into account in, in this phase. And then finally, when we are ready to move on, uh, we have to validate that these uh, trainings are really efficient and, and uh, they are certified uh, based on, on uh, local certification bodies. And finally, we need to, to integrate these systems to the learning management systems to be able to, to create any kind of documentations, reports, etc. Uh, here we have tried to, to uh, list uh, some, some uh, benefits, what, what we have identified for students, for teachers, for, for organizations who are, who are providing these uh, learning facilities. Before going any, any further, let's uh, remind the fact that, okay, Edgar Dale, he has uh, uh, decades ago written this, this uh, cone of, of learning. And uh, we can see that uh, it, it's really obvious that uh, if we can uh, focus on, on uh, practical issues, where students are active, not passive, then we can remember much more from what, what we have uh, studied. So we are emphasizing today a possibility to do not only to read or hear or see, but practically do things 
and then uh, simulations and uh, hands-on training things with, with uh, real-world things are, are the main issues. For students, one of the benefits when, when using uh, virtual training is uh, a possibility to bring uh, gamification, uh, serious game type of, of uh, approaches inside to increase the motivation. Uh, this is much more practical way to, to learn if we compare to the things where you are not able to be present in the laboratory if you don't have all these uh, equipments or, or simulators, expensive simulators like uh, flight simulators, uh, uh, command bridge simulators, etc., crane simulators. This is much much more cost-effective way, and, and uh, it's also based on this this uh, kind of learning. For students, this is also a safety issue. Uh, we can uh, create uh, even hazardous scenarios. And uh, for example, fire escape is one, one good example of uh, such kind of things. For teachers, for example, we are able to uh, offer a certified, uh, certified uh, training concepts like uh, Kiva Inspectors uh, European Hot Work Certification. It's a ready-made solution with, with uh, all grading and, and uh, learning recognition type of things. But, but, uh, Marit uh, Peel will, will soon explain in, in, in details. Uh, virtual reality also gives you an opportunity to, to be present uh, virtually uh, in, in the interaction with, with students. So multiplayer functionalities allows us to uh, make uh, uh, learning scenarios where one teacher can be even in, in other countries and uh, remotely be present, interact, and do those uh, hands-on instructions for, for multiple students in the same, same time. For the education facility providers, we have this uh, uh, virtual training center concept. And one possibility is even to bring this type of portable training center to the desert or any kind of, of uh, field where, where you will need it a uh, couple of days or a couple of weeks. It can be portable. And like I told you, uh, this, this approach is, is uh, very cost effective compared to traditional simulators. It's also because of this, this uh, cost effectiveness. Uh, this is uh, also decreasing the, the risk of, of any kind of, of uh, damages. Or, or so on. A few words about our university, our role in this uh, consortium. So, uh, as a research group leader for futuristic interactive technologies, first of all, a few words. We are uh, proud to, to say that uh, we have won during the last couple of years various uh, international academic. Uh, Awards in, in areas of uh, virtual training and, and uh, mobile augmented reality. And uh, we, are, we are part of uh, international project consortiums like uh, Horizon 2020, Erasmus Plus, uh, Business Finland, and, and now, of course, looking opportunities to, to, to widen this, this uh, project portfolio covering international projects where we have uh, Asian partners. And uh, I know that, for example, this new European Union uh, framework project, uh, uh, Horizon Europe uh, offers opportunities for, for Asian partners to be part of, of this type of, of collaboration. As a research organization, our role in this uh, consortium is to focus on, on uh, rapid prototyping, on uh, user-centric design and effectiveness studies. So our role is, is to, to ensure that uh, First of all, virtual training episodes, they, they are usable, they are user-friendly, user experiences is high enough. And finally, we are the ones who have to convince that uh, there is an impact in, in this uh, uh, pedagogy. We are, of course, uh, searching today opportunities to, to do university co cooperation with, with Asian parties from a research to teacher and to, to student exchange. We have established with our uh, consortium members uh, virtual training 
center concept. We have uh, one center here in, in Turku in, in our campus area. You can see this, this picture of, of the training facility. We have uh, 10 to 12 desks with, with uh, Oculus Guest and an Oculus Rift headsets and, and powerful computers so that we can uh, uh, conduct uh, uh, tests. We can uh, pilot uh, training scenarios and, and concepts with, with our, our industrial bodies. Let me show you one video about uh, what, what we are also doing inside in our training center. Hello to Virtual Fire Safety. Um, here we are learning how to use an extinguisher in virtual reality. So let's start and let's take that extinguisher over there. So move to the extinguisher and pick it up. Perfect. Have you ever used an extinguisher before? No, I haven't. All right. So it's quite simple. So you just have to remove the pin from over here. Uh, yes, like that. And now aim somewhere safe to try if it works. Perfect. So next we have to put out a fire. So stand in a clear distance. That, that should be fine. And pull the trigger to shoot the extinguisher. Perfect. I will oversee this training and you just repeat this three times and uh, I will see how you are doing. Okay, I will stop this uh, video in this phase because time is uh, limited and uh, other speakers will, will start soon. But you can see that uh, later in this video, teacher is able to take a helicopter view. And uh, from that view, he or she can uh, control assist uh, various, uh, stu various students uh, working in, in the same uh, exercise. And just in case, if students will need uh, extra instructions, extra assistance, uh, we have uh, different uh, visualization methods, which enables uh, teacher easily to see where the problems are, not only from the backend system, but visually inside in this uh, training. And, and then the teacher can go back to the first person view and, and uh, discuss and, and show concretely what, what, what's the problem to be able to, to proceed. As a scientist, uh, we are of course interested about uh, human behavior and uh, we have the latest technology like uh, Finnish uh, Vario devices, uh, VR headsets with, with uh, eye tracking sensors. So it's, it's possible to, to exactly see what is the object, game object, uh, what, what uh, uh, students are, are staring at. Uh, there, there is a possibility to, to compare blinking uh, frequency, uh, compare uh, pupil uh, size and so on to, to get understanding what is the attention level, what is the stress level, etc. We have also a virtual reality social platform concept which allows us to organize big events where people are able to be present with their own avatars. We can go back to this, this later. But I would say that uh, before letting next uh, speakers to, to run through their slides and uh, focus on, on other issues, as a scientist, uh, one, one more thing, where is the impact? So I think this uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, uh report is, is quite nice summary. There are various interesting uh, point of views. They have had more than 1,000 test subjects in their studies, and, and I think it, it's very good promising starting point for, for this, this uh, skepticism or, or any, any kind of, of uh, questions whether there is an impact or not. Let me give you a couple of examples what we have studied so far. So together with the uh, uh, local uh, neuroscientists, we have, for example, measured uh, uh, what, what is the perception level in uh, driving context. So we have used the virtual reality in driving inspection. And based on our studies, we had more than one, uh, 100 test subjects in, in, in this study. We are able to scan people, especially elderly people, who have some uh, bias in perception. 
And uh, this kind of, of solution can be used in, in, in various fields, like for example, in, in forklift uh, driving tests, etc. Uh, this is the last slide before I will let next one to, to speak. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, hazardous uh, scenarios. We tested uh, fire escape solution with uh, 169 test subjects. There were firemen, there were uh, university students, there were also kids and uh, industry workers. And uh, these around 50 kids who were participating in this test, we realized that they were not able to navigate. They were not able to read these floor plans or exit signs under stressful fire escape condition. And that's why funding agent was, was very uh, interested to, to see how this, this uh, phenomena could be further studied. And that's why we decided to next focus on, on augmented reality applications. So we are now forcing uh, kids to walk through all these safety symbols what we have inside in, in school buildings. And in the same time, that they are collecting some, some uh, uh, keys from there to, to unlock some, some doors in, in uh, their gaming world and so on. And it will be interesting to see if after they, they have played this, this game, if this uh, problem has been tackled. But uh, okay, this, this mobile application will be now, game application will be launched in, in seven days. And uh, we are, of course, interested to even contact this type of test in Asia, in, in uh, one of the member countries, if, if you are interested to do this type of uh, cultural study together with us. But I, I think now that that's, that was my, my message for, for you, and, and uh, I hope that we have a nice discussion today at the end of, of this, this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mika, for um, setting the stage and explaining what your um, consortium is uh, doing in the space of virtual training. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Marit Peel. She works as CEO and business unit manager for Kiva Inspector Finland. Ms. Peel has experience of more than a decade in the training industry, and she has been involved also in mul multiple development programs. In these programs, the latest findings on learning studies have been given into practice into the business sector. And recently, her focus has been on digital solutions and also interactive technologies. Ms. Peel, over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Lisa. So thank you for this opportunity. I will be here representing two companies. So in addition to Kiva, I will be representing ADE on behalf of ADE's CEO, Mr. Pasi Ramo. And here is a few words about these companies. So Kiva is the world top leader in testing, inspection and certification. And in addition to the complete TIC portfolio, we have training, uh, data, and consultancy services. And these training services include a wide variety of different kinds of e-learnings and digital trainings. Uh, our er experts service in several areas, such as building materials, oil, gas, chemicals, retail, agri-food, utilities, and so on. And we have a wide uh, network of professionals in all around the world in 35 different countries. And our combined turnover is about 500 million euros. And ADE is a fin Finland-based high-tech software company who is a leading provider in these virtual reality solutions already since 2004. ADE specializes in developing these virtual reality environments, uh, interactive web-based 360 content, different kinds of animations and customized CPQ solutions as well. And ADE already has expertise in thousands of projects 
and is the uh, developer of the world's first simulator-based competence assessment system. ADE has a wide partner network and is a reliable partner, and also has a really interesting sister company, which is providing virtual surgery planning solutions called the Surgery Vision. And first, I would like to tell you more about ADE's virtual education. So all these exercises are uh, distributed via the intelligent Isoveli platform. And there is a uh, wide portfolio of all kinds of hands-on trainings, different kind of industries and, and different kind of uses. So for logistics, healthcare, warehouse work, construction, safety training, etc. And these exercises can be real, VR or light VR, or these 360 materials, which are web-based. And also uh, ADE has AI-based social interaction exercises. And in developing these exercises, ADE uses uh, latest technology, so 3D and 360 technology, and also AR and XR technology has been piloted in several pro projects. These trainings are based on the requirements of the Finnish National Agency for Education, and the trainings are being used in different kinds of vocational institutes, these education providers and corporations, and also ADE has created more than 2,000 tailored animation, animations for different companies. And here you can see some images from the training centers that ADE also provides and the user. So add on with what you need. So these are the kind of authentic sports protocols. For example, this fire exit, such as the pin removal and form monitoring. And here you can see the bridge crane uh, equipment also in the middle. And different kind of social interactions can also be built in these exercises. So AI-based speech-to-speech episodes. And here is a short video about this kind of training center, which was built, built in this Pitali uh, center. Here you can see the uh, extinguisher, which has all these add-ons or to support the virtual reality exercise. So there is the uh, foam uh, measurement controls and so on. Then there are these different kind of exercises which require uh, driving some kind of equipment or vehicles. And you can see the exercises changing on the uh, screen in the back. So you can see that this can be used in several kind of exercises. Here, here this uh, person is practicing the uh, crane. And here you can see the overhead cranes uh, add on equipment as well. So you get this authentic experience while practicing those skills. And as mentioned before, all this is distributed via this Isoveli platform, uh, which is a cloud-based SaaS service and easily scalable to different locations and different countries and so on. So it includes all this trainings library with all these VR trainings, videos, animations, 360 web contents, etc. 
But in addition to distributing the trainings, it also has this measurement and assessment of competence built in. So it has this performance monitoring and it can be used for competency pre-evaluation. And also a grading of the trainings can be built in uh, based on AI assessment. And Isoveli platform also provides uh, possibilities for this remote monitoring of the exercises. And after the exercises, we get data analysis on, for example, the skills gaps. And of course, the data can be sent to other programs uh, via integrations into LMSs or other systems. And here you can see an example of the competence assessment and remote monitoring. So firstly, with the help of the AI uh, and remote monitoring, a large number of people or uh, employees or job seekers can be screened uh, efficiently at the same time at any location. So we get the simulator-based pre-screening of skills and mapping of the existing uh, skills and gaps. And the AI component helps with the assessment. Uh, it assesses how the learner perform, performs and transparently and objectively evaluates the outcome. And then also we have the KIVAS surveillance room uh, for this remote monitoring, especially for these certified qualifications, we need to validate the practical test also. And at the same time, we can provide also technical support. And uh, these virtual exercises are a great way to uh, practice the uh, practical part and the hands-on part of these trainings. But uh, in addition to those, Kiva also provides a wide uh, selection of these vocational and qualification e-learnings, which can be combined with these exercises. So in conclusion, uh, Kiva and ADE together uh, provide the whole package for these uh, digital trainings. So e-learnings for the theory part and uh, virtual reality uh, exercises for the practical training. And then, then also these intelligent platforms for assessment and uh, distribution of the trainings. And then also the remote control and uh, validation and technical support from that. So thank you for your time. This was my part of the presentation and next to Lisa. Thank you very much, uh, Marit, for your excellent uh, presentation and insights um, covering the whole range of services from online training, virtual training, and also assessment. Now I would like to move uh, to our next expert, Mr. Ossi Tuswari. He has a long-standing working experience in global, regional, and national Finnish trade policy, as well as also in um, international politics and diplomacy. Mr. Tuswari has worked in research and development, education and cultural heritage related projects, and he has conducted research activities on international politics and history, also on integration politics and public-private partnerships. Mr. Tuswari has been working as senior advisor for Linksoft since 2008. Now I would like to um, hand the floor to you, Mr. Tuswari, for your presentation. Thank you all, and uh, best regards from Turku. You Turku is the old capital of Finland. And uh, actually, as you can see in the picture, I have a t-shirt with the name of Paavo Nurmi Kames. And Paavo Nurmi was originally from Turku and he was the Olympic hero who had a long standing career with many gold medals. So I hope in the coming next Olympics, uh, Finnish runners will follow the heritage of Pavo Nurmi in, in Paris 2024. And that's something where we are, and I'm happy to be involved as well. But now we speak about something else. And it's uh, nice to be participating in, in the skills forum. Hopefully next time we'll have a chance to be 
even in a in a live mode, but this time we do it in this way. Linksoft uh, uh, is a company, as we call it, more like a language factory. Uh, Linksoft has a long history. It was established in uh, already in 1986 by actually um, researchers. The, the other person in charge was the professor of general linguistics, Fred Carlson, and the other one was a professor of language technology, Kimmo Koskeniemi. And they developed actually Kimmo Koskeniemi's thesis from uh, 1983 was uh, something which was called then uh, two-level morphology, a general computational, computational model for word reform, recognition and production. And of course, the technology has developed since then, but this two-level morphology is still a standard, global standard, which is followed in uh, in in this sector in a general terms and it's a, one of the leading privately owned companies in this field in Europe uh, with an extensive range of language services and language technology solutions and we offer a variety of services and solutions for the analysis processing production management of spoken and written language for instance machine translation speech recognition and we have also a speech service app which is used, for instance, in some of these previous uh, videos you could see, and uh, also in these virtual uh, trainings. Our own language technology and the extensive research and development is based on this, uh, as I mentioned, this two-level morphology standard. And uh, we have a long-standing collaboration in Europe uh, with many of the European Union institutions and also globally, a long standing history with Microsoft, with various kind of a language tools, spell checkers, and with IBM, for instance, uh, with IBM Watson. Uh, and it is the only Finnish company actually, which was, for instance, included once again in the NIMSD report on the world's 100 biggest language service companies this year. Uh, we have, a, it's a broad, sorry, can I still go back? Yes, yeah, so it's a broad set of uh, natural language processing for both text and speech with this long-standing experience. And actually, I would alert you to change this uh, NLP for natural language processing. We speak about neural language uh, models, but uh, natural language processing is, of course, the term for NLP. Uh, and all these are scalable and, of course, language independent solutions with uh, ex easy extension to new languages. That's something where we are continuously working on. Next slide, please. So um, I have quoted here something which is very important today, especially, but it has been over the years. But during the COVID-19, of course, we have understood that working in distance mode with hybrid modes or blended kind of a technology and education, uh, own language, own mind is a quotation, which I think is important for us. So everyone has the right to use, learn, or to be understood in his or her own language. Also including all those underserved, digitally underserved, and also indigenous languages, whether they are then in real life or in virtual life or in any digital platform. And I think this is the essence of something which is important for also uh, in the Asian region and globally. Uh, of course, supporting social practices and linguistic accessibility in virtual reality and in all educational services is very important. And this is something which has been discussed in the skills forum before. And I think it will be very topical also in the future. Um, we have an extensive variety of language services, uh, as I mentioned, machine translation, of course, localization, speech service, terminology management, and also the ebook and e-library services, which are solutions also available for this next generation education in threat context. And our vision, of course, is linguistic accessibility and semantic virtual world. This is something which I think will be essential uh, when developing a new kind of a hybrid and new generation learning uh, for all the 
levels of education and uh, links of this committed in this, of course, to bring its own uh, involvement. And we are happy to be part of this consortium. Uh, we have now been working on together in, in Finland for a few years and happy to collaborate also with Asian Development Bank and all our Asian partners. And then in next slide, I think we have a short video. Uh, our experiences, uh, virtual training, uh, a lot of needs for soft skills training with multilingual versions is something which we all realize. And we have successfully integrated speech to text, text to speech and chatbot functionalities in virtual training episodes in a close cooperation with our partners. And I think now you can click on this video to show it. it So this is kind of a car service services where we are involved now. Hi. Hi, how can I help you? Is the work on my tires done? My car number is 123. Let me check with the mechanic. The car will be ready in 15 minutes. Okay. All right. So what now? We can take care of the payment while you wait. Tarvitsen auton rekisterinumeron ja ajokilometrit. Huolto kestää kaksi päivää ja maksaa 781 euroa. So this was uh, something which was an example of uh, how this kind of a training could be done in this kind of a context for tire changing facility. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we are collaborating very actively today and we will be happy to contribute also to whatever is to be developed uh, in the skills sector in Asia region as well. Thank you very much and wish you well and uh, happy to answer for your questions in the, in the discussion section. Thank you. Thank you so much you for also. also the importance of uh, inclusivity through a language um, in uh, such kind of virtual training uh, settings. Um, again, I would like to encourage the audience to ask questions through the chat box. We will address them after our last presentation. Uh, this presentation will be done by Mr. Tim Ulede. He's connected over phone, uh, so he will uh, present without a video, but I think um, we can will be able to clearly hear him. So Mr. Lede works as development manager for TTS development. He brings 15 years of experience in training for the transport and also logistics sector, as well as in simulation development. He has five years of experience in developing e-learning environments, mainly virtual training for forestry, transport, logistics, and also construction industries. I would like to uh, invite Mr. Lede to give his presentation. Over to you. Okay, Lisa and... Uh... Uh, everyone else, uh, it, it seems that uh, Temo has some some uh, connectivity problems and, and un unfortunately he's not at the moment available, but let's see if uh, he will be joining us as, uh, during the, the questions and, and answers. So if you don't mind, uh, I will uh, maybe shortly cover a couple of things in, in, in these uh, slides. So TTS has... Okay, TTS has been for years our our consortium member, and uh, for example, we started the collaboration in in a project called uh, Simulandia, where we developed it together around fifteen uh, virtual training episodes for logistics and uh, forestry. And uh, during these uh, projects. Uh, uh, Työteho Seura, TTS, has been uh, specialized in uh, virtual training pedagogy. And uh, the, one of the messages today here in, in our seminar session is that uh, 
we definitely need in every context uh, local parties, uh, those who, who are experts in, in the subject. And uh, there is also a possibility same way like for, for TTS in our consortium that, uh, for example, those teachers who are writing manuscripts, they are actually uh, having a chance to, to do business. Well, I mean, TTS has a business opportunity together with us. So they are first developing uh, training episodes for their own use, but then the later they have an opportunity to sell these uh, episodes together with us all around the world. So let's see if, if uh, Temu will be able to join later, but in the very beginning when we showed this, this video, you, you saw a couple of, of these uh, uh, video recordings from, from their learning episodes, and, and here you can see, see a couple of, couple of pictures. But uh, Lisa, if it's okay, I will try to wrap up this this presentation, what, what we had together with our industry parties here, and, and then I think it, it's time for panel discussion and, and uh, questions and, and answers. So why we wanted eagerly to be present here today, we are searching for, for various partners. Uh, we are ready to, to uh, develop a tailor-made uh, uh, web portal for ADP, and, and uh, developing a member countries and uh, it, it, it's possible to distribute and localize these uh, uh, training episodes contents for, for Asian context and, and now I think it, it's time to listen to your, your thoughts and uh, uh, maybe someone is, is interested about uh, pricing policy etc costs and so on uh, we have also Mr. Janne Mäkelä from ADE listening this session and, and I think he can give more detailed information about that but all in all the message is that uh, our solution is, is uh, cost effective like you saw for example when Marit was, was uh, presenting all these crane simulators they can be now replaced with, with uh, digital content with, with VR headsets and, and computers you are not uh, needed to, to invest in, in uh, uh, equipments and, and environments which is uh, uh, costing uh, hundreds of thousands of euros and so on. So here are various question marks. Can we find you as, as a certification body or as a training organization or so on? Please uh, give us a chance to, to do something pioneering work together. Maybe you are the early bird to be working closely with us. Here are the contact details and I think uh, now it's time to stop our presentation. Thank you very much for, for this opportunity and for your attention. Thank you so much, Mika, for highlighting again also your interest and willingness to work together with ADB, developing member countries and other partners. And now we will move to uh, the panel discussion and I will also integrate into this discussion the questions we are receiving now from the audience. I see a lot of interest um, also from uh, representatives of other countries. So to make it um, again a bit more uh, practical and specific, I would like to ask Marit to give again an example of uh, how a training uh, process can look like um, from online training as you described uh, for the theoretical part uh, to virtual and maybe also augmented reality training for the more practical part and uh, assessment. Can you give a specific example of, let's say, um, training module or also a specific sector you are providing those services uh, for? Yeah, I can tell you for one example from a client company of ours. Uh, they were using a, a bridge crane training, which where they used a real bridge crane, crane before. But nowadays they are using give us e-learning. So via uh, web, they are taking the training which is registered in our background systems. Then they have their own virtual training center within their own premises where the employees uh, can take the practical exercises and the data uh, from those exercises is also sent to our back, background systems. So the ESO Valley platform is here in a big role. And then these 
two parts of the training are combined and then validated by Kiva, and then they will get a certified bridge crane operator certificate from us. So there is a practical example on how this bridge crane training is taking place then with a real customer. Thank you so much, uh, Marit. I think this gives uh, another insight into how uh, such uh, training and assessment can look like. Um, looking into another aspect, uh, Mika, you highlighted um, the advantages of such virtual training. You mentioned that um, this virtual training is actually faster, more efficient than classroom training and also online training and that students are more engaged and um, they also gain more self-confidence. Um, can you give maybe your um, experience and also your opinion on uh, the practical training, which is actually a big uh, part in uh, TVET, the real life practical training, let's say also um, in a, a company at the future workplace or in a training center, in a workshop. Uh, do you th think this is still relevant and will still be relevant in the future? And how do you see and what is your view on uh, blended training approaches, combining those online, virtual, augmented reality trainings uh, with the practical training in real life? Okay, first of all, uh, answer to your, your question about uh, which type of, of uh, practical solutions we, we, we have, uh, let, let me give you an example, this uh, European Hotworks certification. So uh, there is now a possibility to, to use real fire extinguishers, with virtual reality headsets, real water hoses, uh, real uh, covers to, to be placed over the, the fire. The reason why this type of things have been used now and, and are, are needed I, I think maybe Marit can give you maybe better answer about the statistics. But for example, for in, in Finland, these hot work certification cards, because of COVID-19, you have not been able to uh, refine, renew because of, of this, this pandemic and uh, so so intensively. So, so uh, now thanks to this, this uh, hands-on training possibilities, these, these are certified. There is a body who has convinced that these same results can be achieved when, when you are using this type of uh, hands training systems. Uh, could you please uh, explain that? Oh, sorry, repeat the, the next question. Um, I was also asking if uh, blended training, if you have any experience with the blended mm. um, approaches or do you think that's uh, something feasible? Yes, I think uh, yeah, this this uh, same certification is is also example of, of blended learning because it, it's a combination of, of uh, e-learning content and uh, virtual training content. There are various other cards. Marit can maybe explain more. Where you don't need even in in traditional format uh, use uh, hands-on training uh, exercises. You have only the theory, but this uh, fire work, hot work certification, it's, it's good example where you really have to do some, some hands-on training exercises and complete them. So, so I think this, this same, same certification, it, it's a good example of, of hybrid things. You are not only able to study by, by using hands-on training exercises, but it's a combination. Hmm. Thank you, Mika. Marit, do you want to okay. complement uh, this answer or um, do you have other aspects to highlight here? I think Mika explained it really well. So we are using these uh, blended learning solutions in many of these certification trainings. And as Mika explained, it's uh, not possible to learn everything from practical exercises because we have regulations and some other background information that we need to provide the learners. And also on the other side, the e-learning theory is not sufficient in those subjects where you really need to learn to use uh, equipment or drive some kind of machine or things like that. 
Mm. Thanks, Marit. Um, I would also like to ask uh, one question to Ossi. He highlighted um, the aspect of language and uh, making this virtual and also online training more inclusive. Uh, Ossi, would you be able to um, highlight again some aspects of inclusivity in uh, this space of virtual training? And maybe you can also highlight some challenges that um, come, especially when we think about the various um, developing member countries we are supporting here at ADB and um, different languages, different communities that we are helping to serve. So maybe you can also highlight some of those challenges related to that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, I think as I mentioned, uh, own language, to be able to use it, to be understood in your own language and, and to, to learn in your own language is very essential. And of course, language learning as such is important. And, and we have noted that uh, coming from the live educational environment to, to something else is something which has been a hybrid already for many, many years. We all have been trying to learn languages in various modes. We are interested, but at school and educational institutions, of course, these are used already to a certain extent. However, if you think about uh, smaller language groups, those who are not supported by the major uh, service providers like Google or, or those, this is something which has been a kind of a focus in the, in the past few years already. And that's why, for instance, UNESCO is, is launching this decade for language who is uh, ind indigenous uh, people. Uh, and I think, as I mentioned, underserved languages in digital platforms are still uh, plenty of those. In Asia, you have uh, many major languages, but the many uh, smaller language groups. And like Finland, in Finland, we have understood that we have to do our own job to take care of good service of Finnish language. Uh, I think, uh, Including, uh, including uh, linguistic accessibility is essential for all kind of a blended learning. And this is something where we are involved. We have done this for many developing language countries, small languages, and we are interested to continue this. Of course, it's up to the, let's say the needs and the requirements for each of the languages or each of the services. But what I, Mika emphasized as well is this kind of a platform idea I think it would be very useful if uh, globally within the ADP context, Asian context, you would have kind of a joint platform where you could have uh, linguistic services available for a plenty of languages which are not supported today. And then you could have plugins, uh, which then can be benefiting out of this kind of a multilingual uh, services. This is something which is happening in Europe. We have this CEF Connecting Europe facility under which we are developing, for instance, machine translation, which is open to all. Uh, I think this kind of a development would be very important globally, not only, of course, in Asia or in Europe. And uh, we'll see that this is a huge opportunity and that's where we are in already. And we have been working on this uh, for the decades. Thank you. Thank you, Ossi, for this very um, as well. We are receiving um, feedback and questions from the audience. I would like to ask uh, one question from Nauron Wong. The virtual, re virtual learning center is a huge investment for school developing countries. Um, moreover, the center needs to be aligned with the specific skill standards or also job uh, requirements why competence-based learning is not well developed. So here we have a potential problem in the Tibet sectors across developing uh, countries. They uh, need those centers, um, but uh, how can these uh, countries bring the platforms um, in uh, to life actually is challenging. Uh, so could you suggest any low cost virtual learning platform for the developing world? This is the question. I think it's more about um, um, costing and also accessibility for uh, developing uh, countries. So maybe Mika, you would like to take that question? Okay, thank you very much. Very, very good, acute uh, question. So, so I would say that uh, 
there is a wide range of uh, different type of, of uh, VR headsets. If we start from the most expensive ones, uh, Vario headsets, they, they are maybe five to 10,000 euros per, per device. Uh, if we are coming to the uh, lo low cost devices, uh, Oculus Quest 2 device, for example, it, it's nowadays maybe for 500 euros. It can be used as a standalone or it, it can be used together with uh, uh, powerful computers. Uh, I, I would say that the message, I understand that these uh, are still very expensive in, in some countries, but same way, if we look at what, what has happened in, in uh, mobile phone industry, I think uh, some years ago, we were wondering, for example, in Africa that, uh, okay, how is it possible e-learning if uh, laptops are so expensive? But if you look at nowadays, everyone has own mobile phones and they are very effective ones. There is a possibility to combine, bring virtual reality inside in, in these mobile phones. Of course, we have to make some, some compromises, but the message is that it will happen the same way like with, with uh, but, uh, sorry, mobile phones that uh, finally everyone will, will have a, a chance for, for this type of devices by, by themselves. Now in this, uh, let's say, when we are entering to this new era, I think it, it's important to, to pioneer, to pilot, to get better understanding that what is the momentum. And, and it, it's, of course, always a comparison between costs and, and benefits. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't mind, you don't mind uh, Lisa, could it be possible that if uh, Janne from ADE could give some, some uh, insight about these uh, virtual training centers? I think uh, ADE has, uh, together with Kiva, very good concepts. And, and maybe, maybe Janne could explain a bit more about their strategy. Sure. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Mikael. It was a very good answer. But I would like to add something. Uh, uh, the, how we are thinking in Ade, uh, it has been, of course, this uh, uh, the cost question has been always in uh, somehow in our mind because uh, it's always issue also in the schools in Finland to find the money from their budget. Uh, but then often comes the situation that. Uh, you need to think about what are those virtual trainings that you have and which are the things that you could actually uh, replace by using the, uh, the virtual trainings. Example in Finland, if we have a tower crane uh, education, actually it's more expensive than doing the dentist education in Finland because the tower crane equipments are such expensive. And this could be the one, uh, one way to justify in the virtual reality instead of purchasing the three buses, you could only maybe buy one bus and you have a five uh, virtual training centers where you are training them. Or you have maybe only two forklifts instead of five forklifts. So they, that's the one thing. Uh, what Mika mentioned that the, the virtual reality and the equipments they are developing continuously. Uh, the price points will come down for sure. And, and uh, But we need to remember the hardware is only one portion of the Total costs. The content is very important matter, and that's uh, I believe in. We are very strong on that. What we are doing together with Kiva and uh, and uh, uh, Linksoft and uh, our research partners, because we are building this kind of uh, we could say the fundament of the, the VR education content, which are rather easily the, the, to, uh, to be localized for the different purposes, and that's also gives this. Uh, let's say the cost uh, efficiency in the, from the long term, that we don't need to develop wheel again and again and again, but we can have some fundament where we just tailoring it for the local needs. So this is the, this is the one thing. So, and, and, and what we are doing, uh, I believe this is also the, uh, something what we try to do is not, not only the thinking that the, the training is happening always inside the schools, we are thinking if we could do the different kind of collaboration because they are example in Finland, they are this kind of virtual fun parks, which are uh, the families supposed to have a virtual experience the evening times. But the problem is those parks that they are 
totally empty in the morning times. So we have this kind of collaboration that we can use and utilize. Actually, you, uh, the video you saw from Marit's uh, presentation, that, that was actually made in this kind of a virtual uh, fun bar. So we try to utilize existing uh, uh, premises uh, and use the existing equipments for the educational purpose as well. So I think uh, uh, there is a different ways and factories to find the uh, cost savings and uh, ways to get in the first steps in uh, virtual uh, reality education in uh, every country. We just need to be smart enough and think, think a little bit outside of the box. We need to think what we have in our hands and let's see how we could build it. And uh, there's all this uh, uh, saying that how to eat the elephant. You need to eat in piece by piece, otherwise you struggle in your... So, and this is something that let's take uh, uh, smart steps and let's start to find those uh, those uh, trainings which makes most uh, effectiveness and gives the, uh, uh, the best results in the long uh, short term. And then we could add, and that the, uh, there was a question that uh, to make the, this kind of cost efficient uh, uh, platform to sharing the content. Like leaving the other, we have very cost efficient the platform uh, overall to share this content because the, our a idea is that we can build uh, to have a different, let's say, the pricing models for the, uh, our partners and customers in the way that fits for them. In sometimes they could be the monthly fee, sometimes it could be based on how much you are using the trainings. Uh, we don't like the idea that we are sending the expensive simulator station, which are dedicated only for the one kind of job, and then you have a dusty equipment somewhere in the corner that uh, is used only in the, a small portion of the time. Uh, we would like to think in the way that uh, uh, what we deliver is uh, uh, universal solutions that, that basically everybody can use that uh, for different uh, purposes. There could be some uh, single equipments which are add-ons like a steering wheel, but that's not the, really in the big cost. So we would like to believe that uh, our concept is uh, made exact, exact, exactly to tackle this kind of the price issues and so on. So that's a uh, few words from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janne, for also highlighting the importance of uh, prioritizing and maybe choosing some low-cost solutions on which uh, we can build upon. Um, we have several questions related to quality, content quality, and alignment of con competencies. So uh, one uh, question here is, do we have a standard framework of course competencies that is used for these virtual applications? Um, and uh, second part of the question, is there actually assessment or validation done to ensure the quality of the learning in virtual um, education and training? So maybe I would ask this uh, question to Marit, is there uh, any competency um, standard framework and also how does the assessment of the quality uh, of learning work? Yeah, thank you. So this is exactly the Kiva's role in, in this consortium to make sure that the quality of the trainings and, and, and when compared to the requirements of the learning are compared, we make sure that the quality is on a high level. So especially with the certified trainings, uh, we together with different kind of experts create a certifying program for this kind of training or learning uh, program. And then we compare the e-learning content and the virtual reality exercises to that certifying program so that it qualifies with the standards and so on. And then uh, with the assessment, uh, which is done uh, within the e-learnings and within the uh, exercises via our remote control and the AI assessment, then Kiva uh, makes the validation that this training has been taken according to the certifying program and according to the standards for that specific training. Thank you, Mari. This uh, also leads us to one other question related to quality of training and um, here the role of the teacher is highlighted. Um, so the question is, how uh, can all uh, students participate 
in a virtual reality platform? Is this rather a one-to-one -one or one-to-many model? And um, how can a teacher monitor and instruct the students on such a platform? Is there even a, still a role of a teacher and uh, what are the specific also additional skills a teacher might um, have? So um, Mika, would you like to take that question on the role yeah, of I, I can. The modality? Yeah. Yes, uh, I don't know if, if you remember this uh, short video about what I showed about uh, the use of uh, fire extinguisher. There was uh, in, in the left hand side uh, the student view and, and in the right hand side uh, teacher view and, and uh, like I explained there is a possibility that we have like uh, 10 students same time in, in the same exercise. They can be physically in the same training center or like uh, Marit was, was explaining that uh, it can, the teacher can be actually Kiva Inspectors uh, expert who is actually in their uh, monitoring environment and, and uh, students can, can be even separately all around the world. So I think uh, this, this was an example how multiple students can, can uh, train in the, in the same time. Let's also keep in mind that uh, this, this uh, multiplayer functionality and, and uh, let's say the use of, of virtual reality in, in a context where you have tens of people. It, it's very interesting and acute uh, uh, question. Uh, those who, who have been watching carefully metaverse discussion. So Facebook CEO Zuckerberg, he announced uh, last July that uh, Facebook in five years it's not anymore digital social media platform, but it's a metaverse company. So every fifth worker now already, uh, they, they are uh, actually AR or VR specialists. They have bought uh, Oculus company years ago, and now we can finally see where they are going. Microsoft uh, has developed with HoloLens, and now we, we have seen the first pieces that uh, Microsoft is, is uh, integrating uh, Outspace VR and, and Microsoft Teams. So today we are using Zoom, quite many times we are using Microsoft Teams. But uh, these this big industrial uh, giants, they, they are already developing a second or, or third version of, of these uh, teleconferencing systems. And then we are actually talking about virtual reality. We are talking about uh, avatars. I, and we, we, we want that uh, we, we are talking in the same time also about hands-on trading. So, so we see that metaverse, it, it's a combination of, of uh, virtual uh, events, social interaction, but there has to be also a chance for, for students and, and teachers to collaborate together and, and uh, do really concrete things in a digital way. Thank you so much, Vika. I think we have one, one more question related to the real life uh, practical training. I think we covered that earlier, but I would also like to get uh, Ossi's perspective on that. So the question is, do you really think that the result of virtual training will have the same quality as real uh, or practical training, especially in the part of the TVET education, which uh, requires very practical activities? Yes, thank you. I think if you ask from uh, those students who have been now in a remote mode in uh, TWET training for past one and a half years, they may have a word on this. And depending on what is the, the skill they are practicing or learning, there are, of course, differences. But um, for instance, certain things like welding, you can practice to a certain extent virtually, but I think the real, real life experience is very important. So this kind of a blended learning essentially is something which is, uh, of course, perhaps the, the only way you can do it <clears throat> in today's world. I mean, in, in past world, we did it in real life. And now we are, of course, have found out that um, this blended learning will bring additional element for the real life education, real situation. And this is something you can continue to practice out of the school environment do extra exercises and then of course in the real situation you can try to adapt it and make some more efficiency so this is just a 
additional element which will improve the educational experience, not only in TWET, but of course in any educational sector. So this, I think, is, a, is something which is a huge opportunity, as Mika mentioned already. And uh, this is something where I see the big, big potential for countries and educational institutions all over the world. Thank you, Ossi. So indeed it is um, and can be an additional element to improve uh, the quality and also access to training as we have seen during uh, this COVID-19 pandemic with a lot of remote learning, especially as you said. Uh, indeed, we have uh, a lot of interest also from our developing member countries. For example, in India, uh, in some projects, uh, we uh, have uh, the expression of interest from our partners um, to explore and pilot also such uh, solutions. Um, one aspect is usually also the capacity of policymakers, teachers, administrators, and management in Tibet institutes to really adapt and utilize such solutions. So I would like to ask uh, Mika, do you also have um, the capacity to support um, such um, capacity building and strengthening um, of partners in the process, especially in ADB developing uh, member countries to also enable them to utilize uh, these solutions? Yes, thank you, Lisa. Uh, it's actually a pity that uh, Temu from TTS is not, not able to be present. I think uh, he would be the right correct expert to, to explain here but uh, based on our understanding uh, uh, for example vocational schools they are able to follow because uh, like i mentioned in the very beginning we are using uh, user-centric design principles so they are experts they, they they are involved in in the very beginning so so i would imagine that uh, in, in tibet uh, i think in the very beginning if we would start a project there uh, we should first uh, collect uh, local parties, experts who will uh, explain for us all the regulations, standards and so on. And uh, in the same time, when, when we are following those uh, five steps, what, what was, I, I was explaining, we, we, we are also ensuring that uh, there are local parties who can help in, in, the, in the technical problems, who knows exactly the, what, what is the pedagogy, what, what are the bottlenecks to be tackled, etc. So, so uh, I think we, we had in, in one uh, diagram, sorry, one slide, a diagram where we had a lot of uh, question marks. We are searching for different type of, of parties and uh, there is also a business opportunity for local parties, maybe to be, for example, that uh, assistant in, in the case that uh, vocational schools are, are rapidly starting using this, this technology. So, so definitely, I, I, I can't see problems that we, we could not do that. I don't know, maybe. Janne, if you are there, could you maybe... Yes, I would, like to, I would like to add a few words to that. So, in, in fact, is that we already have some kind of uh, piloting programs that we are actually... We don't uh, want to draw anybody in the deep sea. So, of course, it's uh, uh, everybody's benefit that uh, we take care of our partners and everybody is in the line and uh, learn how to use final And we are developing the things to be the tools to make things uh, more efficient and uh, uh, and uh, easier. So we have actually a few pilot programs on board. We just started in the Brunei one, one uh, and then we have in uh, in the Philippines and Indonesia we have something on board. So we also trying to learn, learn in the. It's we need to be honest. It's also also uh, some certain kind of learning curve when we are going into totally other end of uh, in the world. Uh, but its target is to build the partners in the middle level. That uh, first of all they always get the support from our side. But we want to build our partners be in the level that they can be the support in their local country. And that's why we very often we are starting this kind of pilot, pilot program, uh, where we, of course, are checking that which are those uh, contents which are suitable and uh, what kind of uh, uh, changes are required to match in the, in, the, in the best in the local needs. I could give maybe the one good example what we are building. This is this practical nurse. Uh, practical uh, nurse uh, the trainings and uh, we have had uh, different discussions uh, in the different partners who is actually uh, bringing the practical nurses from uh, uh, example in Vietnam or Philippines 
uh, to Finland because in Finland we have a quite uh, a high demand of the practical nurses as per today. And uh, uh, that's the one thing how we also building these kind of uh, exercises that we try to make the VR environment as a little elderly home in the, in the, in a typical home in Finland, and we use this kind of linguistic uh, uh, that there could be example Vietnamese uh, person uh, who is speaking in Finnish in the Vietnamese uh, dialect. So we, at the same time, they have this kind of getting familiar in the environment in Finland. They also get familiar with the basic words and sentences and something like that. And uh, this kind of uh, actions, of course, means that we need to collaborate very deeply with our local local partners. So it's not necessarily directly in the school, but it could be the partner who is uh, bringing this kind of things. But yeah, it's everything starts from us uh, to start to piloting and testing and learning and understanding because we could say that each country, countries are same, but actually it's not. Every country is a certain way unique and they have some different regulations and laws and, and needs and uh, cultural uh, cultural aspects and so on. But yeah, but it, from our side, the, the starting in the piloting, and understanding it's it's also the first step to start to build this kind of uh, technical support and the collaboration with our partners. Thank you, Janne. Thank you. Thanks for highlighting how you are supporting your clients and also working already in some uh, Southeast Asian countries. Um, I think this uh, is also a good way to close our session. I would like to thank all of the panelists, Mika, Marit, and Ossi, and also Janet so for coming in and answering some of the questions. Um, I would like to thank the audience for their active participation. And I would like to wish everyone um, fruitful sessions of the Skills Forum in the coming two days. So thank you again and goodbye everyone. Thank, thank you very so much for your attention. Okay, see you. Thank you. Thank you.